So coming back to cancer, yes. um, are there any known cancers that are caused by cells from the fetus or the mother? Oh, I love that question. That's great. Um, there was just an article a couple of days ago in the New York Times, but they didn't actually um, quote any of these. They talked about the Tasmanian devil, yep. um, which is, of course, not... Communicable cancer. Yes, communicable cancer. But in fact, I have a small file um, uh, of cancers in humans. I had to go back to 1949 to see a case where a melanoma went from mother to fetus. So the cancer cells themselves were transmitted yes, from other and the, the, so it's quite infrequent, and that actually is the other big, beautiful black box. One of them is postpartum window. The other big, beautiful black box to me is, how is it that women can have all kinds of cancers, and yet they are not transmitted to the child? What hmm. is it in this placenta, presumably, that is able to be so effective? I had a, a, a family experience where um, a woman had recurrent breast cancer. She died eight weeks after she delivered, and Thanks. her boy is now going to be 18 years old. I mean, it, and he wasn't at risk ever. And mm. how is that, that that happens? I mean, why aren't we looking at that? That seems like a pretty profound mm -hmm. biological um, statement. So some kind of very good immigration control. To yes. <laughs> make sure that no bad cells get through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there other implications for cancer you'd like to see researched? I've had this question, when would a chimeric cell itself, and this is out there, so it's not the kind of thing you can get an NIH grant on, become cancer in the person who has that microchimeric cell, but not in the person who donated the cell? Mm -hmm. I thought, well, in someone who's immune suppressed. Oh. So why doesn't somebody look in uh, people who are getting the, who have had an organ transplant, they're immune suppressed because of the organ transplant, and they're popping up right and left with all kinds of skin cancers. Hmm. So wh why don't they just look, take a look and see, are some of those actually um, donor wow. origin? Fascinating idea. So in people who are immunosuppressed, do they tend to have more microchimeric cells than others? You know, I don't think we know the answer to that. Uh -huh. um, we looked at it to a small extent in terms of the patients that we have that we knew what drugs they were taking because sometimes they will give systemic sclerosis patients uh, immune modulating drugs. Mm -hmm. um, and we couldn't see a direct correlation, but I cannot say that we effectively looked at it. Okay. All right, let's talk briefly about sclerosis. I mean, that's the one thing I learned in medical school that might be the strongest connection with microchimerism, is that probably the strongest case we have? Well, it all depends on the type of cell, I think, and the disease. So let's talk about what it is for a second. Okay. Um, what is it? So, well... I learned about scleroderma, but that's a kind of a subtype, right? Right. Well, sclera means hard, literally, and derma, skin, so hardened skin. Mm -hmm. um, the primary... Which is mostly women, right? It is mostly in women. Five to one or six to one? Yeah, one. somewhere between four and eight. Four and eight. Four okay. and eight to so one, depending on the study that you look and at. And mostly in women who've had children or, no. been, or been pregnant. No, that's a very interesting question, really? too. You, you might assume that that would be most logical, but mm. in fact, that's not what I ever assumed because most of the time, the cells you get are going to be HLA mismatched. Mm -hmm. And so most of the time, they may even be protective. Uh -huh. But every once in a while, because there's not endless diversity in these HLA genes, they're going to be HLA identical. So if a mother gets HLA matched mm -hmm. cells from a fetus, then what happens? Or indistinguishable. Okay. So if, if, if the not woman inherited the same thing from, the child inherited the same thing from the dad as from the mom, so right. they're homozygous, that's right. the word. Um, that's when we think there's a problem because the mother doesn't actually see those as being foreign. I see. I see. So is the idea that those cells from the fetus then attack the mother's skin? Well, this is a little complicated, but no. What I actually think, this may be too complicated to explain, but what I actually think is that the normal biological process, you get cells from your mother, some of them are tissue-based cells. You then have a birth, and those cells from the child begin to replace the ones from the mother, including cells in the tissue. But if the cells from the child 
can't recognize the cells from the grandmother, and this is not published yet, but mm. there's a, a lack of ability to see across generations because a, a woman's got cells from both sides, hmm. then the normal replacement doesn't happen. And yet the grandmother's cells are able to attack the differentiated fetal cells that are trying so to take over. You just opened up a whole other door. It sounds I like did. I'm sorry we about do that. have <laughs> cells from our grandmothers in us. Well, no, I use those terms because it's easier for other people to understand. Usually what we do is the person I'm interested in is the woman in the middle. Okay. So it's the grandmother from the perspective of that woman's child. Are there any cells, though, that have been demonstrated from a grandparent? Not yet, that, not to yet. my knowledge. Not, in a human, not, not, not yet. Not. How about from another sibling? There is strong suggestive evidence, but it's not strongly shown directly. And yet, we're, yet to be studied. We're, we've been working on that, yeah. Yet to be studied. I think it will be. Right. I, I think it will be unusual. Mm -hmm. I don't think it will be common, but I think that will happen sometimes, okay. yeah.